all is in a, in, a, in a region of the stack you completely know everything about. You know the start address and the end address. So you know where the PHP info string is. And this all only because you have put it with the uh, um, post data parser in the right spot. And the other thing is null bytes are no problem here because uh, uh, you can also put null, null bytes in the, in the post request. Yeah, and for completeness, what you would do, uh, put in, in, in an empty slot is uh, the send bailout function so that when you return from the executed PHP code, you would end up in send bailout. Anyway, this will crash uh, because um, the address, uh, the, this is um, in a place where um, I told you about the jump buff. The jump buff is a try catch around all the execution of PHP. And when send bailout is, is called, it will use the, the jump buff to, uh, to restore the, the stack value. And the problem here is that we are in a, in a, way, in a place of the stack that's already above the jump buff. So uh, the jump buff will not work. What, what will happen is the PHP call will be executed, and after that it will crash. You can, of course, uh, right, make the, uh, the exploit more complicated to move it back downwards to the stack so that you don't overwrite the jump buff with the PHP code. But uh, this is the easiest way. Your code will be executed, but at the end you will crash. So um, that was a talk for now, so I will show you this simple demo. Actually, it's not so spectacular because, um, so the first thing I show you is how I create these exploits for uh, return-oriented, pro uh, property-oriented programming. What I do is I will select um, the, the classes I wanted to use. I told you I use a send lock. I will create, um, all the properties in the, in the class with the same access restrictions as in the original uh, class because it must be of the same type, otherwise the unserialized will not overwrite the right property. And then I will fill the constructor with, um, yeah, with something that fills the properties in a way that the exploit works. In this case, we remember the writer's property, it has to be filled with a list of uh, writers. And um, in this case, uh, I just instant this class which I defined here, and again I have put in the properties I want to have. In the constructor I create the, uh, the specific objects or put in the right data, and again this is a, the send mail class doesn't need to be any property at all in this case because I just want a dummy class, so it's just an empty class. But the pvic view again defines a template and a, sm and a smarty uh, object. You see I create a smarty object, and in the template I put in the PHP code, and in this case, I was very lazy and put in uh, the global variable PHP code in there. And yeah, this part in the smarty again will define the properties that are required to, to hit the code. And um, yeah, in the constructor, I will just create this special resource XPL and set the output filter to, uh, to an empty array because I don't want an output filter right now. And here I just tell it the um, um, the callback for the XPL resource is this object, which is PVXMarty, and the evil met method. Yeah, and then I can define the PHP code I want. In this case, it's PHP info. And then I initiate the send lock, put this all into an array. The first element will be the, the payload, and the second element will be. Uh, just any value. I will serialize it, and then there's a little trick. I replace the serialized 999 with a zero. The idea here is I already have a zero, which is on my payload, and if I put another zero in there, and this will get unserialized, then um, it will unserialize all the payload and in the end it will put in the second element to the array and the second element will also be key zero so it will delete the first one. So I can ensure by manipulating the serialized data here that at the end of the unserialized all the payload is destructed. 
and this is sometimes required because otherwise you might, might, might hit a, a fatal error or an exception and this will end up in PHP terminating the request in an unsafe way and so your destructor will never be called. So you have to ensure that the destructor is called in the end. Yeah, and then uh, because I was very lazy this time, I just create a, a GET request. Uh, I echo it out. The host is t-test-system. Uh, in this case, it's a cookie pvic auth, which is x equals the base64 encoded exploit. Yeah, and uh, actually, um, I ensured, I patched my pvic, it's the latest version, but I patched it back to not have the blacklist. So all the exploit here will not tell you anything how to bypass the blacklist. You would have to do something to the serialized string after, after this year. So you have to like three or four modifications. When you do that, it will still work, but I don't show you. <coughs> so. Um, you shouldn't see that clear. So uh, what I do is I will show you when I just ex uh, execute the exploit, it will create the header, which is all the serialized data. And um, yeah, and now I will just use netcat to pipe it to netcat. And you will see, oh, it executed. When, when, you, you, when you know PHP, you, you know that this looks very much, where's the mouse? It looks very much like a PHP info. And yeah, it is a PHP info. So we executed PHP info on, on the target system. And now I will just go back to the, the source code and change the, the code that is executed. Um, yeah. Again, I do the PV exploit, which will be uh, this time a, a different string. And now I pipe it again, and you see it executed a system comment, uname A, and user bin ID. And by just changing uh, this thing, you can execute anything you want. And of course, uh, sometimes you maybe hit a, a web server with a PHP safe mode and so on, or open baster. So you would just take the research I presented last year at Black Hat and create an anti safe mode exploit, anti open baster exploit and just put it in, in the serialized data. Yeah, this was the return, uh, the property-oriented programming thing. Now, this, now the second uh, example, which will be the last one. Um, yes. It's a little Python script I wrote to exploit the, uh, the unserialized uh, use of the free bug. Um, if you saw something about my syscan talk, uh, you will see that I already posted something like this, but actually if you compare it to the syscan talk, you will see that all the second half of the exploit, how to achieve code execution, is completely different from what I present at syscan. Because people told me I let their brain explode with the other method. So um, this one was actually far more simple than the previous one. So, um, okay, I execute this, and oh, actually it's really fast this time. Uh, when I tried this in my hotel room, it was endlessly slow. I don't know why. Same VMware. So uh, what, uh, what is happening here, it will first send some serialized data and determine the size of an integer and so on and what PHP version it is. I didn't show this today because I don't have the time. But if you look at the syscan slides, you can see how this is possible. And then it will leak the address of the uh, object handlers. will leak the object handlers will optimize it to a, a better address and scan backward in memory. It will find the ELF header, retrieve all the headers, the program headers, the string table. Then it will look up uh, some symbols, the executor globals, the send evil string. And then it searches the jump off inside the executor globals. It finds a stack address. And now this will take a while. It searches all the code segment for um, exchange EX, ESP, followed by return. Um, this takes a while in my hotel room. It took like two minutes, but uh, I hope it's faster now. Um,
or maybe it will never end. And what should happen now is it first searches this um, gadget, and after that it searches the uh, pop red gadget, which will be done in less than a second. Um, oh, there it is, and it sent over the um, the actual. Um, Um, it sent over the um, yeah. It searches on the stack for the data we the, the pattern we put in. You see, it found the pattern at some address on the stack, and then it creates a fake object with exactly this address as object handlers, and then it creates uh, the request that uses this object and destroys it. And what it does, it returns into some PHP code that actually uh, spawns a, a shell on four 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 which is the PHP shell. I just already connected to it here. It's uh, nothing else than just a thing that receives data and evals what you, what you send it and give you back what it does. Uh, so um, you can just put in PHP code, PHP info, and you have PHP info again, or you put in system, you name a, you see, it's a Fedora and the last one to prove that we are Apache user bin ID and you see we are Apache I hope you can see that from behind we are Apache and yeah that was a demonstration <coughs> finished Actually, I don't know, uh, any questions? Um, what I presented at Syscan um, would be protected by the Suhoshin. Um, this time when I used the object destructor way, this would not be protected, but Suhoshin would um, make uh, leaking the place where you are in memory harder, because right now Suishin will, uh, I, I showed you that when you free some memory, the first bytes will be overwritten with the previous uh, block. But with the latest Suishin version, this is obfuscated, the, the pointer, so what you would receive would be a, an obf uh, obfuscated pointer, and um, when this is reused as a string, it will be uh, some garbage, because uh, the string will use a real pointer, but it will be obfuscated pointer, so it will catch. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah. And when you have Suishin patch, the latest one, uh, it will not work like this. It will be possible somehow to, to get around this, but uh, yeah. It's a lot harder with Suishin. Yeah. No more questions? I somehow expected that. <laughs>